Here's a question. What do you think about Jesus' crucifixion? What do you think about it? What grabs you? For many of us, we've heard so much of the story, we kind of like go on autopilot, like, ah, I've heard this before. But I ask this because some look at it merely as a historical fact. Some think that, sadly, like it was made up. Mm -mm. And some, some simply say, oh, the crucifixion, the betrayal of Jesus, it was sad. But when we actually look at Jesus and his final hours on earth, we see the heart of our living Savior and his heart for us. In John 18, verse 1 through 4, it says this, When Jesus, Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where, he, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered, and Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you? seeking. At this time, it is Passover, which later would remind them how Jesus is a sacrificial lamb. Because the Passover is when the Israelites were getting ready to come out of Egypt. They would put the blood of a lamb over their doorposts so the angel of death would pass over them. They would be rem reminded years later, or maybe not even, that, not even that long afterwards, that Jesus was the sacrificial lamb because by his blood we are covered and we are saved. So this is Passover. A lot of people are in Passover. Uh, I've heard reports that at Passover time, at this time in Jerusalem, it could swell to like a million people. Wow. And here we see Judas who agreed to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And this is actually prophesied in Zechariah 11, verse 12 through 13, hundreds of years before. And here he is with, uh, with troops to get Jesus, which is kind of funny because he's got this whole big detachment of troops. And uh, it's like, this is God in human flesh, Judas. You've seen him do miracles and you think these guys are going to take care of him. It's kind of funny in some ways. But I love what Jesus says, whom are you seeking? When we come to Jesus, whom are we seeking? What are we seeking? Someone to grant you every wish like a genie or a loving savior who gave his life for us so we could have eternal life. And because he gave us eternal life, when I seek him, I should serve him and I should follow him. Hmm. Jesus is worth seeking for the right reasons. Judas didn't have the right reasons, but for us, we can seek him for the right reasons. I'm glad Jesus loves me and went through so much to bring me eternal life. Yeah, he sure is the greatest friend anyone could ask for. Yeah, he's God, Savior, and best friend, all wrapped up into one. <laughs> I never thought of it like that. I know. I'm here to help you. <laughs> uh, thanks, Stuffin. See, that reminds me. What do you call a hot dog on wheels? Huh? Fast food. Ha, ha, ha. John 18, verse 5 through 11 says, They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Whom are you seeking? Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. <clears throat> now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, Whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go on your way, his disciples that the saying might, might be fulfilled, which was spoken of those whom you gave me. I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, <laughs> drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? John records them falling down. 
Why do they fall down? Because Jesus is God and in complete control. This go actually this I am statement when he says I am or I am he goes back to when God identified himself to Moses uh, in the burning bush in Exodus when Moses says, who am I going to tell Pharaoh who sent me? And God said, the I am. Here's a quote I want to read for you. There's a double meaning in this. <clears throat> Jesus is both identifying himself and voicing God's authority. Apparently, he was demonstrating, demonstrating God's power as well, so that it was in direct consequence that they went backwards from him and fell to the ground. Jesus is in control, and he still wants to protect his disciples. And then yet, here's Peter. Here's Peter. Love Peter. Relate to Peter. Cuts off the ear of the servant of the high priest. It's like, were you even aiming, Peter? <laughs> you're just like, ah! You're a fisherman, not a swordsman. And Luke tells us that uh, Jesus actually uh, healed Malchus's ear. But all of this shows us the dedication of Jesus. When he says in John 18, 11, Put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? This cup is the cup of suffering, of the wrath of God over sin. And yet Jesus wants to bear it on the cross for you, for me. Wow. Why? For love. Because he loves us and wants to give us a way to have eternal life. So many people say, well, there are many ways. Why can't there be other ways? Jesus gives you a way. God in human flesh died for your sins. Final sacrifice. Isn't that enough? Isn't that enough? It should be enough. Because he loves us. And that's why he does it. He drinks that cup of suffering. He's willing to go through with all the suffering we're going to read about uh, in the next couple weeks. All the suffering for us. And now it's time to dig deeper with Dudley. You know, Jesus' betrayal is so sad. Yeah, but what he did for us is wonderful because by his death and resurrection, we have eternal life. Yay! Yeah, <laughs> oh, that makes me really happy. I know some of the tools that I use my break and I can't fix things with them anymore. But the Jesus fixes everything ho oh, ho oh yeah preach it my spiky rabbit friend <laughs> always remember when you dig down deep you gotta hit rock and jesus is our rock yeah <laughs> it can be hard to read about jesus being betrayed but it is useful it's useful that we understand what jesus went for one went through and uh it's also useful that hey if you ever had somebody betray you, Jesus understands. <laughs> and he uh, he was with uh, Judas for like three years. Jesus understands. But it's always good to remember when we read about his betrayal, his crucifixion, what it was for. It was to bring us about eternal life. So with that, let's pray. Oh, Jesus, we love you. And we're so thankful for everything you've done for us. Thank you for this passage we just read. That reminds us, Lord, you willingly took this cup. Oh, Lord, the wrath that is upon and the consequence of sin for us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. May you bless our week and may we walk with you. In your name, amen. God bless you.